Hello and welcome to this video in which we will find the Fourier transform of a discrete time triangle wave. I've drawn a sample of such a triangle wave here on the screen. It uh, is a discrete time signal that is zero for values of n less than zero. Then at zero it's one, at one it's two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And it goes back down to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And its, val its value is 0 for values of n larger than 10. And uh, in order, uh, the purpose for doing this is actually to demonstrate the convolution property of the discrete time Fourier transform. And so we'll compute the Fourier transform of this triangle wave without actually computing any Fourier transforms directly. We'll use the properties of the Fourier transform and uh, Fourier transform, a Fourier transform that's been computed in a previous video. So if I look at um, the signals that I have, uh, X of N is the triangle wave. And it turns out that I can get X of N by taking R of n, which is a rectangular signal, it uh, is 0 for values of n less than 0 and 0 for values of n greater than 5, and between 0 and 5 it's 1. I take that signal and convolve it with itself. That gives me a triangular waveform. That gives me x of n. So um, I'll leave that, if you don't believe me, I'll leave that as an exercise for you to work out. So it turns out, uh, well again from a previous video, I know that the Fourier transform of R of n is um, e to the minus j omega cap n minus 1 over 2, where cap n is the number of non-zero samples I have here. So in this particular example, n will be equal to 6. But we'll actually work this out um, in a more general form. Uh, let's see, this is, uh, it has, oops, this, what have I done? OK, so it has this uh, phase term. And then we have sine of omega times n over 2 over sine omega over 2. OK, so these guys multiplied by each other uh, represent the Fourier transform r to the e j omega. OK, and uh, I've actually got a plot here. Uh, this is r e j omega. This is the magnitude on the top, and it's plotted between 0 and 2 pi. So this is 0, this is 2 pi. And then this is the phase angle of um, r. OK, so since I have this um, convolution here in the frequency domain, I have multiplication. So x e to the j omega is r e to the j omega times r e to the j omega. Okay, It's the Fourier transform of this guy times this guy. And since they're both the same guys, then it looks like this. And when I work this out, I get that this is e to the minus j omega n minus 1 times sine squared omega n over 2 over sine squared omega over 2. So basically, I've just taken this guy here and squared it to get this. OK, and I can do that again because I know that this triangle wave is the convolution of these two rectangular waves, and uh, the convolution property uh, convolution in the time domain becomes multiplication in the frequency domain. And I've graphed these. Uh, so this is um, the magnitude of x 
e to the j omega. And this is the angle. And you can see that um, I have more, I have a much larger uh, portion of the magnitude uh, close to a value of pi, or I'm sorry, of 0 and 2 pi. This is 2 pi out here. And um, that's about it. I'm not sure what else to say about this other than uh, that's the way it looks. So um, that actually concludes this video. Uh, again, the purpose was to demonstrate uh, that convolutions in the time domain turn into products in the frequency domain and to do an example where this was the case. So hopefully you found this useful and thanks for watching.